In this week's cold case, we're going back 90 years to the Great Depression, right on the cusp of prohibition being overturned. A local rum runner goes missing. It's a mystery, but also a tragedy that left a local family asking the same question to this day. What happened to Danny Walsh? February 1933, the same month Congress proposes the 21st Amendment to bring prohibition to an end, a South County bootlegger disappears. He was beer baron Danny Walsh. There were folks that thought he was sort of the scourge of South County, you know, traveling around in a stagecoats with German shepherds and machine guns. I mean, he was a, he was a gangster. Danny Walsh's great-grandson, James Walsh III, is a filmmaker now, speaking to us via Zoom in London. He spent time researching and writing about the man who grew from a boy in Cumberland to a jazz age figure right out of an F. Scott Fitzgerald novel. He became sort of this folkloric character uh, in our imagination because no one ever really knew him. Danny's disappearance made a splash in the papers, landing on the front page of the Providence Journal. James has his theories about what happened and believes someone dangerous and powerful wanted Danny Walsh out of the way. It involved money, it involved a meeting, and he was never seen again. Several years after he vanished, his name reemerged in the press. The Providence Journal reported a skeleton found in Vermont was not his. A skull caught in a fisherman's net off Block Island didn't belong to him either. Remains have been found. The scene, a piece of property on Matunic Schoolhouse Road. Fast forward to 2016, and Danny Walsh's name was back in our headlines after human remains were discovered on what used to be his family farm in South Kingstown. Could they belong to the missing rum runner? Archaeologist Joseph Waller was brought in to answer that question. We have been doing this long enough that we, we know what we're looking for. How quickly did you know that this was not Daniel Walsh's body? Uh, within 15 minutes. Let's see. There is this reference to this a lot, and so we kind of had an idea of that's what we're dealing with. Waller says through the research he had done prior to arriving and what he found on site. This is some of the coffin hardware we found when we were excavating these things. He knew he was dealing with a family cemetery from the mid-1800s, not the haphazard burial site of a 1930s bootlegger. Uh, it was five or six individuals that were there. The family that was interred there, they were Quakers. And Quakers themselves, uh, they didn't always mark uh, their graves for their own philosophical beliefs. It really affected their whole lives. James says his great-grandfather's disappearance was a true tragedy for his father and his aunt, and particularly his grandfather, Danny Walsh's son. So every time a lead turned up or a skull turned up, or a, and it went on for years because it was un, an unsolved case, well, you can imagine the ramifications you know, on his family of spending his life looking for his father. Archaeologist Timothy Ives understands the undying search for the truth. It's human nature. Um, you know, people have an unresolved story that's almost legendary in the community. So even I thought, you know, maybe there's a chance. It sounds really interesting. But, uh, you know, one of the things about archaeology, it very often uh, disappoints uh, the hopeful. And James wrote a screenplay about his great-grandfather in which his remains were discovered, but in reality, he doesn't think they will ever turn up. For more information on this and other cold cases or to tell us about one that you think we should cover, just head to WPRI.com.